in these days of the woman of Revelation 12, Satan is removed for 1,000 years in these latter days, as Revelation 12 says. Now, this mysterious woman is not so mysterious because I have been given open-eyed visions in a trance twice. I've heard the audible voice of God a couple times. I've had revelation of revelation to restore all things by the kingdom, age, new covenant, which I have already done, but nobody wants to listen. But one thing for sure, um, it came to pass that Cahill Gabran wrote that David, one of his followers, had a discourse of Jesus the practical. And it, it has to do with where we are with our possessions. And uh, he said, I do not know the meaning of his, uh, I didn't know them, understand his discourses or his parables until he was no longer with us. I didn't even understand until his word took living forms right before my very eyes and fashioned themselves into bodies that walk in the uh, possession of, of my own day the, as I go forth marching towards a better future. So let me tell you this, though. Uh, one night it came to pass that uh, men came to rob me, and I, I, I started to grab a sword to, to accuse them, but I surrendered uh, so that they would not <laughs> do their worst because they were armed too. And so I continued writing my remembrances of the masters. And when the thieves had gone, I remembered him saying, who would take your cloak? Let him take your other cloak also. And then I understood. And I sat uh, recording his words uh, that no man could have stopped me from where, uh, where he to have carried away all of my possessions. And for though I would guard all my possessions and all, also my person, I now understand more than ever where the greater treasure is. So as people venture out into the great beyond, uh, in the spirit following after he who is Emmanuel, our Lord God with us. We must go out into the deep. The treasure of excellence is the excellence of the treasure of Christ's Lord and uh, of his love rather, it's in my words. But one thing is absolutely for sure, he has his way in the storm and the clouds are but dust under his feet. And so it is really important in order to uh, really be happy to explore all that we need to understand to have a, a fruitful walk. And so I better put on my glasses here. I'm struggling. Where is it? And so in this hour, the power of forgiveness comes because God is pouring out his spirit upon all flesh. And uh, as this happens, uh, it is a magnificent time to be alive because we can finally come to understand that forgiveness is love and love is forgiveness. And uh, so it is time that if you know, uh, how does this say here, hold on, you will own nothing and be happy is the name of uh, she asks his work. And just as David, speaking through Cahill Gabran, uh, it is time to think about what is the truest treasure in our life that we can go after. Are we doing that? Or are we walking contrary to the ways of love? Because if we lean onto our own understandings, we can never truly be fruitful in this world. And so as I live, uninterrupted, change the channel and fast forward past the commercials, it's time to listen to those birds. Verily, verily, the Bible says that unless um, this world will hear the word of love, that there will be no birds, no fish, no mankind left on the planet, uh, Zephaniah 1.1. And these are what the days of Noah really are about. Now, this is the gospel writer of this hour, Shiasa, House of Beloved. Um, 
I called her uh, about three years ago, more maybe, and I emailed her rather, and I let her know that the Lord wanted me to exalt her because he showed me this woman's position of authority, which is right at the top. <laughs> you can't get a higher position than this lady. Uh, uh, God is not a respecter of man. I really am the Elijah of this age. And uh, I have no more authority than this woman or the teacher that he has set apart by the name of uh, Anna Grace. And I should show her photo too. And uh, But one thing for sure, she has, uh, has been flowing with the Spirit a long time. I don't see eye to eye with her on everything, but you know what? She doesn't see eye to eye with me on everything either. But we are to take what's good and embrace all that's good about prophecy and keep all that's good. And what is really good is this is the days of the latter days where God has given his covenant to Israel, Jeremiah 31.1, in the latter days, and to all mankind, Jeremiah 32.27. To prove that, God has now revealed that he has had uh, uh, Israel to inherit all mankind. Isaiah 54, 3, and these are the days that their name has been changed to Chrislam, the latter day name that God would appoint in the latter days, Isaiah 62, 2. And if you didn't do that, you would be a liar. Because they have received the salvation that he promised them now uh, for all mankind. For verily is it written in Hebrews 8, when this covenant is finally given, and it's never been given in all of history. That's why there is no ministers that can say anything against what I am saying. They know it is true. And uh, snookered are they. But one thing is for sure, the Lord is saying, I am your God, you are my people. I have forgiven you and I will never remember it. And in the days of this woman of Revelation 12, Within the days of Shias's uh, ministry, uh, Satan was foretold to be removed for 1,000 years because he has been the accuser of the brethren. So it's time to get real, get glad, and get good with the Lord God, for he is all that we have imagined him to be and, and s so much more. And so in this hour, uh, it's time to start rejoicing because as we do rejoice, uh, we lift up love and he comes on brighter and stronger, more radiant than ever, as if it were magic. But one thing is for sure, in the light of everything that we're processing in this hour, it's really important to really uh, have good understandings about the driving force of what kills love and what lets love go free. So it's really important not to lose sight of the fact that everything in this old world uh, in the 3D of duality is in fact a perversion, uh, if you will, of spiritual principles. And this comes to uh, her attention in a couple of ways. You hear a lot of this these days about something called oh nothing and be happy and own nothing and you'll love it or something like that, she says. Uh, it's running all around the new circles and whatnot about some new agenda. Just be happy with nothing. Uh, to take land and housing and such and to put it in to the hands of the government uh, and to put people on a social credit system. This is the kind of stuff people are talking about so that you can own nothing and you can be happy in this earth and this plane. It's a terrifying idea, she says, and I agree because that would mean that we would be completely under subjection by another authority other than our very own. And that means a loss of personal freedom uh, and a time that we cannot provide ourselves with the kind of independence, even in a spiritual way, uh, if, if all was to be uh, uh, nothing happy over. Uh, it has a completely different meaning and a completely different experience. Uh, it's such a complete uh, unattachment from anything physical in this world. And this is a spiritual world more than it's a physical world. 
the, the invisible is much stronger than that which we can see. Uh, only by looking within to the freedom that love alone can bring can you find true freedom within so that you don't have to have any person not having to own any land, not having to have external circumstances to meet some kind of idea of happiness in order for them to have joy. For joy without reason, there's no reason for it. It's just joy, and it's always an inside job. It has to come from within. And this is how some people have renounced their lives as humans, as people. And they've gone into caves, they've gone into monasteries uh, underground, or they live in the subway system, and they're just content with nothing. It's difficult for a person, or I should say it's impossible for a person to ever really fully grasp such an idea about uh, own nothing and be happy. 25% uh, of us have uh, real mental illness that's noticeable. The other 75%, we have traits of all the mental illnesses, even though we might not act upon it. To be uh, deprived is not a healthy thing. Um, it, is, it, it makes in this world depressing and you need money to live. I wish I could uh, preach the gospel full time, but no one would ever let me speak. And I've done everything in vain. Isaiah 49 4 was written of me, never of Christ. And so in this hour, it's difficult for a person, or I should say it's impossible for a person ever to really understand what Shiasa is, is saying and what Cahill is saying to fully understand that because it's the, it's the person that must own something. That person must prove its independence, its unique specialness. And if it's not given an opportunity to all it can see is lack of frustration and anger. And when that happens, spiritual principles are, are seen here in the dimension with the eyes. We see these things happening and we see them with our eyes and our eyes that are the principle of duality. The vision that we have through our eyes is not the true vision. We look through a kaleidoscope lens. We have biases. We see what we want to see. We have select of uh, hearing the truest reality is not distorted reality as we see um, she uh, like myself listened to Russell Brand occasionally and he was lately talking about all these billionaires buying these bunkers under the ground the Bible talks about that in the book of Mark it says all the king's men all the king's horses the free the bond all will have to go into the dens of the rocks because that'll be the age of the nuclear winter when uh, after Zechariah the, the eyes will consume away and sockets, tongues consume away, mouth and flesh consume away as we stand in many battles of slaughter for the great bearer of the Soviets, Daniel 7, 5, has arisen and now it hears the words, now you may go eat all the flesh that you would like. So God wants to cut these days short, but it cannot be done except by God's word alone that has now reopened for that very purpose with uh, Shiasa leading the way. Uh, and so sh she says, uh, or rather Russell Brand says, that that's what's happening. They're all buying these great big stuff, TVs, yada, yada, yada. They're filling it with all their gold toilets and stuff. And uh, he was playing a commercial, Russell was, uh, and, and the commercial said, uh, it said, well, you can live out your life in this beautiful bunker, enjoying all the comforts and familiarities that you had before. And you can be completely at peace no matter what's going on outside. And Russell came back with his usual humor saying, oh yeah, don't worry about all the children that died from the nuclear war now. You're going to be happy in your little bunker now, uh, whatnot, you know, just keep watching the same old news broadcast over and over. Well, the thing about it is that we look at that and we say it's so ugly and so inhumane. How could anyone want to continue living in great comfort 
when uh, the world outside and all the humans and nature is being destroyed or totally destroyed. Uh, but uh, what they were saying, but you can still be in peace. For that reason, in this hour, we are quickly headed to the days of Isaiah 60 and 61. Money from all over this globe is going to come in for the great restoration, the great restoration that will also become overflowing into the physical realm. This is the great restoration of Elijah, um, the restoration of the, the will of God in these latter days for us to walk two steps forward, one step back, and not worry about the step back because he loves us even when we, we goof, because we're all goofs. There is no good man. So in this hour, Russell was really uh, cracking up about this. Uh, so you can be safe in the bunker. Well, the spiritual principle is no matter what's going on, uh, uh, we will understand if we don't intervene as a race and step in and stop the stuff, God uh, works through us and he wants to cut these days short. Uh, and the rich people of this world could bail the world out so easily, but yet they'd rather go down with their ship in a nice bunker as they go insane. Uh, and then there would be no nobody left on earth, Isaiah 25 says. Uh, no, Isaiah 24, the earth in peace is never to rise again. Nothing but death is ahead of me, Deuteronomy 18:18, 18, 18, Acts 3, 21, Malachi 4, 6. And Christ said that unless these days were cut short, no flesh could be saved. But he can't cut these days short unless people send his word of the, his everlasting gospel, of which I am the writer. Shiasa is a writer in this also. Cahil Gavran is a writer in this also. This is the everlasting gospel that will go again, uh, flying high in the sky as our dove of love transforms into the most regal eagle of the eons by the transformation of love. For love has always been transcendent. And so within these walls, within our temple, uh, we need to see that the human personality is the persona, the titles, the subjects that we are under the object that we've made of ourselves. And we see ourselves as loving people, but most of us have so many conditions on our love. If someone doesn't uh, meet up to our expectations, we divorce them. Divorce the wife, the husband, the child, uh, the brother, the sister, it doesn't matter. And so uh, nothing can penetrate that kind of hard-heartedness. And uh, that cannot even be understood if you are a loving person with your love flowing as a fountain. That's why we must die to, to ourself uh, and be born again by love. Our love must be alive as a little child. If it is not, we need that born again experience. Now, born again is, um, uh, by the skin of your teeth also. Uh, watch the deathbed confession of Anton LaVey, the writer of the uh, Satanistic Bible. Remember, the Bible says, all calling upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And who is not calling upon love? If you're up there, love. <laughs> be my beloved, the blessed, the adored. So this is why uh, she asked and myself, Russell, we all try to keep uh, love in the forefront of our hearts and mind as we try to discern things happening in the world. And the, she asked has already given two clear examples of this. Anything which you see in the world that's coming out of the mouth of media, government, uh, people, it's offensive to us because it's a distortion. It's only a one-sided thing of a higher principle sometimes, or a lower principle, but it's one-sided, uh, and it's distorted. They paint the pictures that they want you to see. They can slant it in so many different directions. Uh, look at the, the special military operation. It's not a war. <laughs> Come on. Anybody uh, wants to believe that one. But one thing is for sure, there'll always be a, an opinion. There'll always be a search to find out what's right and wrong and this and that. It's a cycle in of its own self, and it's repetitive and unending, and it can never end because God's never done with any of us until we enter glory as sinless, as a little child. 
because as soon as we're in the spirit, we are as the angels, neither meet, neither uh, male nor female. And the glory of his latter house shall be greater than that of the former, for the first is last and the last is first. And the glory of his latter house has been uh, shining much more brightly, his house of beloved, than it ever has before, because Shiasa is leading the way. And in this hour, it is time to realize that people need to die to all of the labels that we've given ourselves. And it's time to take God out of boxes where we can find him with our religion, narrow-minded uh, uh, religiosity. For wide is the way paved unto hell by our conditional love, where we practice letting it become desensitized, being like the old toady in a, a, a pot, turn up the temperature, he doesn't even realize he's transforming into a dead duck, into a cooked goose, because he's cold-blooded, he can't discern the temperature. And so it's time, Let the in these days of the refiner's fire, let the temperature go up, and let the coal become as diamond, so we can glimmer and shimmer by the beautiful resplendent light of glory that's being cast down from the sapphire sea on high, the crystalline bottomless blue ocean of the forgiveness of the Lord's forgetfulness. And that is why Satan has been removed in the days of this woman of Revelation 12, because he has been the accuser of the brethren, and he would have made God a liar instantaneously. God wanting to give us the covenant, saying, I'm your God, I forgive you, and I will never remember, but Satan's right there. Oh, yeah, but you hear about Shasta? Oh, yeah, but she was a bad girl. Dan, oh, he was bad. Russell Brand, he was really bad. Did you see him in that movie? Uh, what was that? Uh, uh, oh, yeah, that guy, he was playing the Arthur guy. Oh, he was drunk. He was bad. No, you know, uh, but we do have to keep dealing with all of this and processing through this. And it feels like death when a person is so clearly seen through a, a beloved emoji. Um, we uh, see things distortional. No one in this world is worshiping the God, true Lord of God in spirit and in truth. His, his characteristic of his bottomless love was hid. That was part of the mystery of God that's over in these latter days because the first is last, last is first. The seven trumpet did sound off first. And when it did, all nations became the Lord's because Isaiah 54, 3 says, Israel would inherit all mankind. That is why God in the latter days it, it said he would give that covenant to them. And that's exactly what he has done. And now these are the days of Shiasa, the days of Hebrews 8, when all religion that has been on planet Earth will now just blow away as smoke. For he who is our majesty of majesties, uh, the clouds are but as the dust under his sandaled feet of peacefulness. And all standing in front of his most perfect plan of the perfection of that peace, uh, Prince of Peace there, of they get the shit pie of uh, Elijah, diarrhea shit, dung crap pie up their nose with a rubber hose so they're drinking it down like some chocolate milk. The vipers of religiosity that do not want the peace that he wants to send us. And so in this hour, imagine that you're walking on a trail and then out of a corner of your eye, you see a snake coiled up just inches from your foot where you just step down and then all of a sudden you jump back and your heart's racing and it's pounding and you get dizzy and you look again and then it's only a rope. It's not even a snake, it's just a coiled rope and it about scares you to death, almost give you the big one. Uh, and so it's try being... Uh, you'll never be scared in the same way that you were first time. That was impossible. It gets easier as you get scared again and again because you already know that so transcending is the human mind. It's very much like this when we begin to see how utterly in vain and futile it is just to have gone for a few generations and generations and even how our unique distinctiveness programming spiritually has come from our ancestors and we have been in many ways brainwashed by yesterday so we need to reverse our childhood tapes uh, because 
our culture, the way we were indoctrinated as little children, the buck has to stop. If you don't take the, the uh, good fruit out of the bowl, away from the bad, it'll all uh, become bad. So the Lord is saying in this hour, it is time for the great falling away by the command of the Lord. This vision was written plainly on the tablets, Habakkuk 2, King James and the Jewish Bible, plainly so those hearing this red would run. It is time to leave all organized religion. I don't care what religion it is, if it is not loving, if it will not accept uh, as viable, practical, uh, heaven sent teaching that uh, she asks, uh, uh, Anna Grace and I are giving. Um, and uh, we are no trinity of love, but we are the three uh, that have been foretold for this hour. And Anna Grace, you're going to hear a lot more of Anna, I promise you. And I'm getting a nice anointing over that. And, and, and a lot of this new movement of spirituality is saying, uh, own this and own that, but don't believe it. It's, it's let all men be liars and let only God be true. And that is the truest truth. So don't believe it. Uh, because these things occur within the space of consciousness. And some people could say, you know, it's demons or principalities of the air or higher dimensional beings that are fallen, that are manipulating our thoughts very well, mesmerizing, hypnotizing us, letting our carnality become the leader as we think us men with the wrong heads. And uh, my man that married... Uh, my wife, Linda, and I, uh, I praise the report, we're getting along really much better these days. But uh, my, the man that married us, he told me, he said, I used to be a walking dildo with ears. And that's why everybody condemning each other is crazy. Most of the guys out there are porn addicts. And if they're condemning gay people, it's because they're doing a different sin than they are. <laughs> it's utterly insane. And so in this hour, we don't even need to know the reason why we need to continue to stay uh, in darkness. Uh, we, we need to understand why we have certain habits, habits that take actions that can be broken, habits that we can rebuke and repent over. Uh, and so we need to think about these labels that we put on ourselves and God. For God does not condemn us if we have our love alive as a little child and have not committed the unforgivable sin. So if, if you're in that category, most people are, do not let anybody condemn you for nothing because they don't have that legalistic right according to the covenant. It is a promise written in stone by God over us. So if the Bible says, if you're walking with the Spirit, you are under no condemnation. That's to have walking with this, with some level of, of uh, unconditional love left in you as a little child. Uh, and if that means, even if it's the size of a faith of a mustard seed, That'll keep you at least from being tossed out into the outer darkness of lovelessness where there'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And so it's time to realize that it's just the only way to be free that is completely to identify that, to shine the light of awareness on it. it, it, it foreign. It's for, once the person can be seen, though there isn't anything left for us in any three-dimensional reality and so the distortions will fade away and it is promised in in uh, Daniel 12 in these latter days that God would remove the veil of all distortionality from off all nations of the world the Bible says so Isaiah 25 Isaiah 60 Micah 4 and so a lot of people she asks, and I agree I have thought a long time uh, we're included in a rapture paradigm. I was right there most of my life. And uh, I believed that Jesus was going to come into the sky and save us. And while that is true, it's not in the way that you think. And I agree with her. The person will not be taken, beloved. God is not a respecter of persons. In the same way he led everybody in Noah's 
they die and he did not hate them at all he he hasn't even just loved them he adores us that is the um, his word uh, that word of the kingdom age covenant I'm your God you're my people uh, I forgive your iniquity will never remember that supersedes any other written word of God because that is his promise that is his covenant and so in this hour uh, the space of our consciousness uh, where we become aware it's where we are taken from to new realities to expanded realities so that we can awake it's time to awake from a spiritual slumber of ignorance for there has never been any darker gross darkness than the ignorance of love alone and so it's time beloved we need to extract our minds from the old game it's only only way to do that is let the bet dead bury the dead it's time to be living uh, and as she says I just know that many of us are uh, processing some very intense realizations because this is already known in the space where we are our higher selves within Christ for those that have eyes open behold it effortlessly and to us there is no mystery at all and we find ourselves and I'm in this boat too I find myself stuck in an odd place between the human uh, the being uh, that we know and have become so comfortable in uh, being uncomfortable in uh, but the higher reality is the perspective of being the writer of our very own stories. Our destiny is not finished and written in stone at all. Even Jonah 4, he got relented and changed his mind. He did not destroy Nineveh in 40 days as he had said. And so in these days, the Lord is saying, I shall return my fierce, terrifying anger, and this shall be considered in the latter days, if my people of love will give me the desire of my heart, of the Lord's loving heart, to be more loving. For if we cannot love those whom we can see, we can never love those whom we cannot. And so it is time that we uh, look at our mind and feelings and allow them to go to different spaces while trying not to become only invested in certain psychic uh, phenomenons. And at the end of the day, it's time that we all need to become completely humbled. And just sometimes is just to say, I don't know is the best way to humble ourselves. But it's time that we need to raise our hands to heaven. For I tell you truly, the arms of love have never been too short to save. And it's time that the world must now embrace the chosen uh, ladies of Zechariah 4, uh, the ladies foretold for the latter days, uh, Shiasa and uh, Anna Grace. Love from love. Until next time.